When it comes to securing, protecting your Bitcoin, uh, the choice of the hardware wallet is really important. Uh, you know, not only from a philosoph ethical philosophy, but from transparency, the secure elements, the usability, the ease of use, simplicity. And um, yeah, that's why I'm going to talk today with Lixi and Liu, CEO of Keystone Wallet, formerly Cobo Vault. But now, you know, it, they have really tremendously advanced and improved a lot of things. Uh, you know, little maybe tiny details uh, here and there. Uh, so I'm really pleased to have Lixin Liu back on my show to give a sort of an overview, quasi, you know, sort of a guide tutorial on how to use the Keystone wallet with the BC, uh, you know, single SIG, multi-signature, mobile, mobile wallets or desktop uh, wallet with Spectre and Sparrow. Um, but, you know, for more detail, I would re really, rec for de more detailed instructions, tutorials, I would guide you to BTC sessions also, you know, uh, and keep it simple Bitcoin and lots of other, you know, uh, guides and tutorials. But also, you know, I'm going to put uh, the information on the show notes. The, the website of Keystone, where there's also you know a bunch of tutorials and guides. So without further ado, this is my uh, tutorial episode and uh, talk with Lixin Dio of Keystone Wallet. Well, welcome, Lixin Dio, CEO of Keystone Wallet. Been a long time. How are you doing? Welcome to the show. Yeah, good, 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 good. How are you? How are you going? Yeah, I'm doing good, doing great, you know, trying to, uh, you know, <laughs> somehow make a sense of all what's going on around us. But, uh, <laughs> but we, we just been, you know, talking before privately. So, yeah. you know, uh, what can we do? I mean, we, we can, you know, push for more education and empowerment of the people with technology. Yeah. With, uh, useful, you know, I'm, I'm a fan, huge advocate of simplicity, as you know, and making it uh, okay. user friendly and really making it easy for people, especially, you know, in, in respect to all the circumstances that's going on. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there are going to be more and more people, not only Bitcoins, but there are going to be more people who will migrate, who will move, who will be in transition, you know? Yeah. I think it would be good. Like, I'm just going to give you a practical example. I mean, I, I live with my girlfriend uh, right now, you know, at uh, top of the mountains uh, with our seven month old baby girl. And then my full note, for example, is at my own home in Vienna. You know, so uh, okay. if everything goes wrong, you know, like I have nobody who's going to, you know, restart it, like physically replug, unplug it or whatever. So I think it's okay. these kind of details are going to become more important. And so we have sort of, I don't know what the word is, like more redundancy, you know, more flexibility, oh, okay. more redundancy. So yeah. I think this, uh, the air gapped Keystone wallet, formerly Cobo Vault, which, uh, which you're going to talk about, uh, which I want you to talk about, like what are the differences, what, you know, uh, what has changed since then? Go ahead. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, I think maybe we can recap a little bit about why we do the rebranding. Maybe we can start from there. So yeah, I, I think you guys and also your audiences, your followers, or they are all familiar with Cobo Vault. And also I wanted to drop a big thank you for, for you, for Kevin, for making those wonderful uh, tutorials and uh, also education uh, tweets about Cobo Vault, about air gapping, about QR code, about multi-signature, everything. I'm really thankful of that. Uh, and uh, uh, the thing is, uh, but the Cobo Vault uh, is one of the, I'm not sure you or your audiences know, is that the Cobo Vault is one of the three product lines of Cobo. And uh, Cobo is a big giant wallet company here in China. And the other two product lines for Cobo was the Cobo Wallet and the Cobo Custody. And they are both, they are both centralized wallet. And uh, in 2020, because it is a, it was a uh, bull market, especially uh, considering the the booming uh, DeFi stuff. And uh, uh, Cobalt Wallet at that time was making tons of money. So, and uh, also another reason, so they decided to strictly focus on their centralized wallet, which is Cobalt Wallet and the Cobalt Custody. And uh, so they decided to keep Cobo Vault into minimum maintenance. Uh, and another reason for them doing this is that they feel that there's very little synergy between Cobo Vault and the Cobo Wallet because Cobo Wallet was centralized service and the focus in China, but Cobo Vault was decentralized service and the focus on 
uh, European countries and the United States, Canada, Australia, these kind of countries. So there are very little synergy between these two products. That's the reason that uh, Cobalt wants to deprioritize uh, the Cobalt vault into minimum maintainers status. And uh, uh, personally, I, I, I can fully understand that from a business perspective, right? So you just to try to optimize your uh, limited resources in the company and try to make the biggest outcome. It's very natural thing for running a company and I can fully understand that. But the problem with that uh, for our couple ball team where we were really, really into this product. And uh, we were also, even the couple ball was not making tons of money like couple wallet, but luckily we break even when in the middle of 2020. So overall, the the business was was good, it was not that good as Cobalt Wallet, but the business was good. And we received a lot of respect from the community. And we were very, very keen to the feedbacks from the users. Like you, you also gave us a lot of feedbacks and we took the product and to polish the product better. And also we were deeply engaged with the Bitcoin community, especially the Bitcoin developers. We intact with them to make the Cobalt Vault compatible with uh, different kinds of wallets like a Blue Wallet and Wasabi uh, and also Spectre, Spiral Wallet. Um, and the thing is we also joined the community as part of, we can fully feel that we were part of the Bitcoin community. Also, we were contributing to uh, co-draft a Bitcoin improvement proposal for multi-signature. And also we, we helped other, we co-worked with other wallets together to spread the idea of 100% error gapping, right? And also the QR code standard. So we did a lot of things for Bitcoin community. So we cannot be easily convinced to uh, drop this product and uh, help Cobalt team to build the Cobalt wallet. It's not what we want. So, uh, and they offered, they gave us very, very offer, but we turned them down. So Cobalt team left. And personally, I bought out the intellectual properties of Cobalt Vault and we left Cobalt team to create the new brand Keystone. So basically Keystone, uh, took every legacy features, legacy features from Cobalt Vault, like uh, QR code air gapping, PSBT, Bitcoin only firmware, multi signature compatibility, uh, Shamir secret sharing for mnemonic phrases, and also dice rolling for create your own mnemonic phrases, and also features like fin fingerprint sensor and uh, web authentication, self destruct mechanism, everything. So we took every legacy from uh, Cobalt Vault. And also for Keystone Hardware Wallet, we also had several uh, improvements. For example, when we were in Cobalt Vault, a lot of users were complaining about the, the micro SD card slot. So it's it's a hide behind the, the battery. And it's yeah, that very was a hard struggle. To... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. It's for me also, it's terrible for me too. <laughs> yeah. Because so it's, we, because I remember um, um, there was a, a sort of a I think it comes yeah, yeah, yeah. It still comes with it with a stick right and if you don't have yeah. that you have to do it you whatever poke, with comes with the tool with your finger or whatever yeah 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 you, you poke it out out of the out of the slot so for Keystone hardware wallet the first thing we do is we move out the slot to the to the side to the side of the uh, to the side of the device uh, yeah. And also we made several other improvements. For example, we improved the, the quality of the battery. And also we improved the QR code scanning speed. And also we upgrade the QR code protocol from a uh, from an older version, which is U, U, BCR UR 1.0 to a the most uh, modern standard, which is BCR UR 2.0, which is currently the industry standard right now. And uh, also we are, we are working on integrations with other Bitcoin wallets and hopefully some big projects. Hopefully we will release that in September. Yeah, this uh, mainly the stuff where uh, we did 
for the improvements of the Keystone Hardware Wallet. And uh, right now we are totally running the business on our own uh, independently. So uh, we won't be hindered by other like company, bigger company decisions or this kind of stuff. So we can fully uh, dedicate it on this hardware wallet and to try to be the best hardware wallet with the best security and also best user experience in the market. So yeah, this yes. is why yeah. the, yeah. Okay, no, no that's uh, uh, beautiful. Um, let, let me just go step by step. Uh, some questions. I think there. I remember when you when you first announced. You know, uh, you sort of detached yourself from Kobo, and you you know you you got your own. Uh, uh, you you lead the the project and the company as a CEO and. And uh, there were a lot of people, I think, you know, who ha like like myself, who who who, who, were, who was, you know, were using uh, the Cobo Vault. Um, the first question I think was, um, I think, uh, will uh, will there still be like um, updates to um, to the Cobo Vault, right? So, uh, I mean, the, the, intuitively, the first thing I did, I just discarded it. You know, I just threw threw away the the Cobo Vault because. I was using, you know, I was using Spectre with uh, with it as a single wallet or a multi signature wallet on on Spectre, mm -hmm. um, and it just didn't make sense anymore. And then, you know, I was even gonna, I was thinking gifting it, uh, giving it to someone else. But you know, if you're not like technically really advanced and you don't know, you know, how to, and you feel like insecure, like are there any like insecurities or or. Uh, um, um, you know, I guess you'd have to erase everything and then reset mm -hmm. and maybe use it just as a hardware wallet or as a mm -hmm. you know, second, third hardware wallet. And the other question I think was about the battery. Uh, so you can still use the old battery because you said you improved the battery. Yes. Um, so because it's, you know, it was st still the same specifications, the, st the same parameters. Yes. Um, I, I, you know, I just kept it. I kept the, the, the charger or whatever you call it, the rechargeable battery or the, the battery holder, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. The battery, you can, you can use the couple volt battery for, for Keystone, but unfortunately we cannot offer any updates for the couple volt firmware because the couple volt firmware, unlike uh, Trezor, for Trezor, they can accept third party firmwares. So, but for Cobalt Vault, we didn't allow that for security reasons. Uh, and uh, for every Cobalt Vault firmware, it needs to be signed by a specific key. And that key is owned by a Cobalt team, not us. So we cannot sign the firmware. We cannot do updates for Cobalt Vault. And uh, for the later updates, that will be focused on the Keystone Hardware Wallet. And I know it will, make some people, make some users unhappy. And uh, here I wanted to to note again that the decision of not signing the firmware was not by us, but by Kobo team. I asked for the private key to sign the firmware, but they didn't give us because uh, they wanted to uh, migrate those Kobo Vault users to Kobo Wallet. So they don't want to migrate those users to Keystone. Even migrating to a centralized service doesn't make sense, but this is what they want to do. Yeah. So, and uh, for the old Cobo Vault users, we offer a 50% off coupon for them. You just need to send the, uh, the, the other proof to support at keystone.one, K E Y S T dot O N E. Just put them together is keystone, keystone.one, support at keystone.one forward the, the couple about other confirmation email to that. And then we will share a 50% off coupon to you. Yeah, this is yeah. our- Yeah, I'll put the, all those links links in the in the show notes, but I recommend everyone, you know, to go check out, uh, you know, first of all, your uh, your Twitter handle, Bitcoin Lixin, uh, or yeah. Keystone uh, on Keystone Wallet. Yeah. And the website is again, uh, key, ST.1. So I'm going to, yes. you know, I can, you know, screen share maybe later on. Um, so uh, you you mentioned something about, you know, like improving uh, also the QR code, what, because there were some, um, not only, probably not only with, with, with Keystone or Keystone or Cobo Vault formerly, but uh, with the, with the, with the scanning of the QR code, but actually you already had that function, you know, where you can like, 
uh, animate, you know, the QR code, uh, you know, in yes. case, you know, if you're working, for example, with Spectre, or I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't yes. have much experience with, I mean, I'm, I do have, um, and I'm using uh, Sparrow, which is a, you know, a great, even user-friendly, mm -hmm. new-friendly uh, desktop wallet, mm -hmm. as, uh, like mm -hmm. Spectre. So before mm -hmm. we talk about that, like uh, before we talk about different methods or options, which how you can use uh, 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 the Keystone wallet, um, are there any like details I've left out, like uh, besides like improving, you know, those? Uh, yeah, APIs? yeah. Maybe maybe I can explain more about the QR code. So uh, the first thing we do is we improve the quality of the camera. Uh, so previously. Uh, I don't remember the exact number, but uh, for the previous version of Cobalt Vault, you can, the camera can just recognize a small range of size of the QR code. But right now with the new camera, we can recognize a bigger spectrum of the sizes of the different sizes of the QR code. So you can recognize big one over a small one. But for older version of Cobalt Vault, you can only recognize a small spectrum of the size. So that's the first thing. And also we improve the QR code protocol into a uh, more modern standard, which is BCR-UR 2.0, which is uh, managed or uh, which is uh, pushed by the uh, blockchain commons team. And uh, that is a more uh, advanced version and also can make the scanning user experience much better. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Before I forget, I mean, um, we should mention uh, keep it simple. Bitcoin and BTC sessions, or Ben, uh, you know, who makes yeah. a lot of you know really um, uh, super tutorials, guides. Um, mm -hmm. Whether it be you know hardware wallet or uh, uh, how to you know create a single wallet, multi signature wallet, uh, you know all the technicalities. I think uh, BTC sessions and keep it simple. Bitcoin do a great job. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah yeah i just lost the thread <laughs> i'm just gonna ask you something uh so um um so what are what are the what are the common like questions that you get from from the users uh you know that you have that were the customers when it comes to keystone you mean, wallet? You mean like, for the keystone yeah like issues challenges or uh what are oh, the okay common Okay, I think I think the the biggest the first part is about the um, the feature requests. Uh, right now, uh, we haven't there there are something big in front of us that we're going to do. Uh, the first thing is we're going to integrate Casa. Uh, people are asking for that, and also people are asking we should integrate it with Caravan. And uh, yeah, we will also put some resources on that to to do that. And also people are asking about uh, Taproot. We're also looking into that and maybe we can support that in the future. Uh, that's for future uh, for feature requests. And also a lot of users, they, they are asking, especially some hardcore Bitcoiners like you, uh, they're asking whether we can give them uh, devices with uh, Bitcoin only firmware as the yeah. factory firmware. I was just going to so, ask you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so actually, update process. Yeah. Yes. Right now we are working. We are. We we just started working on our next generation product development, and uh, for next generation, we will make some of the devices as the Bitcoin only firmware as the factory firmware. So when you receive the product. You don't need to upgrade from multi-coin to Bitcoin only. When you receive it, it's just Bitcoin only. You just need to update the latest the Bitcoin only firmware. So this is also what we're working on, um, basically for our next generation. And also for the next generation, we're going to make it more open. Maybe uh, right now there's still a big closed part, not 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 strictly closed part. If you sign an NDA, we can we can show you the source code but it's not publicly showed is the Android code. So we may replace that Android layer with some other solutions to make that part uh, fully open source. So this is also what we're working on. And also people are asking us if we can use a secure element made by uh, Western countries. Uh, yeah, and that's also something, a Western brand secure element. We're also working on that actually. 
why is that? Uh, that I'm curious. Uh, why is that? What, what, why the secure element? What, what what are the risks? Like if you do don't do not have like not the not the not the risk. So currently <laughs> we are using a, a secure element from a relatively small vendor, but the upside of doing that is that the vendor allows us to open source the firmware of the secure element. So that's the upside. But the downside is we're using a relatively small vendor. So for next generation, we will change the strategy a little bit to use it because you know for code card, they are using the secure element only for storage. They don't use the secure element to do any uh, cryptographic calculation or algorithms. They just use secure element as the storage. So maybe for our next generation, we'll take the same approach. And then we don't need to open source the firmware of the requirement because it's just a simple storage. And then we can use some, because it's storage, so we can use some kind of closed source requirement just for storage. We don't do the cryptographic calculation, just like, just like code card. So I think this is a good approach. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Now, now, it's, now, Keystone uh, Wallet is an air-gapped hardware wallet, right? I mean, actually, we should stop yes. calling it hardware wallet because it's actually a key signer, right? <laughs> this is... Yeah. Uh, Right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but it's definitely. an educational process. You know, people need to understand. You know, what is Bitcoin? What is the blockchain? You know, I mean, because yeah, yeah. It's, actually, it's, actually, we really, we really. I, I think you bring a really good topic. We really wanted to position Keystone as a. We call it cold blood signer. So it just it just signs the transaction for different kinds of software wallets. And for the software wallets, you don't need to worry about the keys and the signing process. You just leave that to us. And we scan the QR code, get the unsigned stuff, and verify it on the device, sign it, and then send it back. So this is, so this is also our, uh, our mentality or our product philosophy. So we don't want to build a world garden. We just want it to be compatible with as many software wallets as possible not only Spectre, Spiral for the most popular and Blue Wallet for the most popular wallets, we're also talking to some new wallets like uh, Nunchuck and also Lily Wallet, this kind of new wallets. So we really, and this, this also take the full advantage of PSBT. So we just take the rule or take, obey the protocol of PSBT and then we can interact with other software wallets. So yeah, thank to BIP174, thank you to Andrew Chow, thank you, thank you for PSBT for making this compat to maximize this compatibility and the interoperability. We really like this. Yeah, it's great work, great work. Then, uh, before we talk mm -hmm. about like different methods or different options and how we can create, you know, uh, a wallet or a mobile with a mobile wallet or desktop wallet, single sig or multi sig. Uh, let's talk about like the, the, the okay, you, you mentioned, you know, like um, it, uh, when, when you send out, you know, the Keystone wallet it comes by default as a multi-coin wallet, right? So, yes. so what people do is like I did, I immediately, you know, uh, download and installed the, the Keystone uh, from a Bitcoin only. And mm -hmm. the, the, the update process, uh, when, when you have like a update, just maybe, I thought it's important to mention, um, when you download the you know the newest file the newest update file uh, on the micro sd uh, do you just you know uh, do you have to extract the zip file or can you just can you just you know download the whole thing uh, and and drag the whole zip file into the micro sd maybe you know might be a t totally you know naive question but i think for huh. lots of noobs maybe out there uh, what what is the like the you know the the the, the correct uh, way to to do this yeah, I, I think there is some kind of historical reason here. So uh, in if you go to our source code, you can see that uh, when we're upgrading a firmware, we only recognize a zip package, which is the name as update.zip. So we have to use this file name as the for the for the upgrade file. Uh, but also for upgrading the product, we also need to tell people what's the uh, version number of this package. So we have to wrap another layer outside of the update.zip 
and name that as like version 1.4.0 or version 1.3.1. Yeah, so yeah, this is, I know this is a little bit confusing, but if you have go through one, just one time and you're familiar with this, I think it's okay. Exactly. Um, so, so okay. So when you are, um, I guess, a lot of people, you know, using, um, or I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe can you talk about like, like what, what are your experiences or your, you know, the feedback you get? Like, how many are there more people using it, uh, using the Keystone Wallet, uh, you know, in connection with a with a mobile wallet? And what are the most like, uh, you know, uh, favored ones or you know? Mm, okay. Okay. Uh, I think for some, uh, I think if you want to do multi-signature, currently the favorite the favorite wallet is still Spectre or Spiral because those two wallets not only offer the feature for multi-signature but also offer offer the feature for connecting your wallet to your own node and even uh, Tor connection this kind of stuff and. Uh, also a bigger chunk of users, those users are not that hardcore. They don't, they don't do their own full nodes, but uh, they want some kind of convenient uh, user experience on their mobile phone. And for that scenario, uh, the best choice is for Blue Wallet. So you can use Keystone with Blue Wallet. And also, you know, the QR code scanning user experience on a mobile phone is better than on a laptop. So uh, for ease of use and uh, for some average Bitcoiners, Bitcoin only, uh, Blue Wallet was the, is the best choice for them. And also uh, Blue Wallet support uh, multi-signature too, but they can only do uh, 223 multi-signature, which is kind of limitation, but I think it's already good enough for most of the Bitcoiners. But if you want to advance the features, it's better to, to, to use Keystone with Sparrow or Spectre. Yeah, good point. And I think it's important uh, bef um, to, um, yeah, to, to mention that um, the thing is, I have an uh, sort of an older Android version. <laughs> It's a, oh, you know, okay. it's a no name. It's it's a pretty you know I love I like my, my my smartphone. It's a Maitsu no no name, but it's it has a great you know features and 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 qualities. Um, but it has you know it's an older Android version eight point one I think something like that. So it does mm -hmm. not work with Blue Wallet. So just in case uh, listeners, Blue Wallet you need uh, it requires a, a Android version I think at least nine or ten maybe even eleven I'm not sure. So mm -hmm. uh, that's why I had to de install it because it, it was it was working until recently and I couldn't update it I couldn't reinstall it until I found out you know in the Telegram chat of Blue Wallet that. It okay. might be the reason by me because I have an older Android version, but yeah. uh, you know, I'm, uh, not that I was yeah. using regularly uh, the blue wallet, but you know, there are some, you know, there are tons of others, you know, super wallets that are yeah. still you know, compatible. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, th I, think, I think that also partially explain the reason why you should use a dedicated device for your private keys, because for the software wallets, first the software wallets connect to the internet, the attack service is, surface is bigger. And the second part is the software wallets will iterate very fast. For example, suddenly they don't support Android 8.0. Uh, if you keep your private keys on a dedicated device, then you can be very casual. You can, you, it's, it's totally okay. You just buy another Android phone and download the, the the blue wallet and the sync them together, then boom, you can use it like 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 the new one, like the older one. It's very easy. But if you put your private keys in your blue wallet in your old Android phone, that's kind of for me, I'll be very nervous because I need to yeah. maybe clap, maybe find all my recovery phrases and maybe in different places and put them together to recover, to do the whole recover process, which is kind of risky for users. So yeah, this is also part of the reason you should use some dedicated devices for your private keys, storage and designing. 
Yeah, I mean, I was just testing it anyway, but and I didn't have any any sats or Bitcoin on the blue wallet. It just, you know, it just it just forces people, you know, to. Uh, I mean, my 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 smartphone is like, you know, I mean, I don't know how many years old, but uh, but it just forces you, you know, to to switch to or, or buy another, you know, Android version because you know because there's no support, there's no customer service of, of mm -hmm. from my or different yeah. providers. It don't give give, give yeah. you any update upgrade, so it's very annoying. And you know, so you yeah. need to spend a lot of money, like hundreds and hundreds of euros or dollars, on a new uh, smartphone just to be compatible, uh, just to be able to, you know, to work uh, to open up a uh, uh, whatever yeah. a wallet. Actually, and, actually, that's a very common. Uh, as, and that's a very common issue for software development uh, because I can also understand from I can also understand it from uh, the blue wallet team uh, perspective because they have limited resources and uh, nowadays more and more people are starting using Android 11 and even Android 9 very few people are using that so they make the decision to abandon uh, Android 8.0 will create some kind of inconvenience, but I think that's understandable. It's, this is software development. We, yeah, but, but the suggestion is that you need to keep your private key on a dedicated devices, on a dedicated device and uh, to do the signing and uh, the key derivation, this kind of stuff to make your whole system more robust, not affected by this kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 Because you know, the there might be an issue that with with uh, with every other app, then you know, it, it yes, <laughs> like a lot of apps that always that stop stop working all of a sudden. Uh, what are you going to yeah. do? You know. So yeah, uh, I know. I see what you're saying. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's it's very annoying. It's just um, you have to you know the the, the annoying part is that uh, the the producer you know the the maker of those phones they don't you know they they should be actually at least you know give you the uh, you know the the following releases at least you know at least android uh, 9 or or some kind yeah. of update but they, it's like there's no customer service it's, it's really poor you know uh, yeah 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 yes so uh yeah uh is there anything like uh, technically I should um, uh, we should we should mention in regards to Keystone? Uh, what 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 kind of questions or feedback do you get like from uh, uh, testimonials from Keystone users? Uh, I think it's pretty pretty good, uh, especially for the micro SD card because um, because people usually have very dumb hands and cannot do the micro micro SD card slot very easily. And also people are very satisfied with the new camera scanning uh, because sometimes people scan your mobile phone, sometimes they scan a uh, laptop or sometimes they scan a bigger monitor. So the QR code size, the QR code sizes varies from different screens and the monitors. And right now the Keystone can scan almost all of them. They don't need to manually uh pull the bar to change the size of the qr code i think this also improve a lot of the user experience uh yeah and also users are really expecting the integration with casa and caravan and uh, we're working on that oh that's amazing yeah if, if caravan mm -hmm. uh sort of as a as um what do you call it as a as a uh, redundancy like you know yes. you can you can go back and you can retrieve and 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 if if yes. and so uh, just to mention i mean uh, caravan is from unchained capital right sort of as a yeah unchained capital um, open accessible well okay yeah yeah fully open source okay mm -hmm. uh Maybe we should talk, uh, or let me let me ask you about the battery again, because you said you improved also the quality of the battery, because that, that's something that irritated me a little bit, because uh, the battery went, you know, uh, was 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 empty, like, um, after a relatively short time uh, in Cobalt. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference now? Like, like how does it last? How much longer? Like, what, what's the difference? Oh, uh, actually, the difference was not the uh, how long it lasts for the for the battery. But the difference is that uh, previously we received some uh, complaints from the user that uh, because we know that the the voltage uh, in our home was not steady, was not it's not steady, so it goes up and down. For example, in China is uh, two hundred and twenty 
uh, voltage. And it, sometimes it goes to like 250 and sometimes it goes to 150. So for this kind of change, we call it current surge, will hurt the battery and maybe even make the boundary uh, unfunctional. So for the couple of volt, we have this issue. And uh, for Keystone, we have fully solved this by changing the uh, circuit design because there's a little circuit board in the battery if you just deassemble it. And we the design of that circuit board and add some new electronic component onto that, onto that to avoid this kind of issue. So this is mainly the, the improvement for the battery. We didn't improve the volume of the battery, but the robustness of the battery. Uh, is there a trick, because uh, I think someone mentioned that in the Keystone Telegram, or was that you yourself? Like, how can you make it more lasting? Like, is it better to take it off, like when you're not using it? And... Yeah, 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 yeah. So if, when you are not using it, if you are still attaching, attaching the battery to the device, you will lose battery at a very low current. So it's recommended that if you are not using that, you just de detach that battery from the device. And also, uh, it also makes people feel safer because uh, my device is offline. And also now the battery does is not attached to the device, so I don't need to worry anymore. So it also creates some kind of uh, security feel for a user, yes. Great. Um, let's talk about the multi-sig um, wallet. Um, mm -hmm. What what are the like the 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 biggest obstacles for people like creating or uh, or things that people should pay attention to when creating a multi, especially with the Keystone wallet? Is there anything like we should we should emphasize? Uh, I think generally the first thing we should emphasize is that uh, uh, I think right now there's still some people they don't understand why Keystone and the cold card is a better choice of water signature compared to Ledger and the Trezor. So maybe here I can first explain the reason here first. Uh, actually, the, the reason is that uh, if you, because we, we all know the saying that don't trust verify, right? So on Ledger and the Trezor, uh, it's very easy to verify a single signature transaction because you just verify your uh, destination is right, your destination address is right. You just verify the amount of Bitcoin and also the fees are right. Then you sign a transaction. So it's very easy for Ledger and the Trader to verify a single signature transaction, but the situation is totally different on multi-signature transaction because the multi-signature transaction was, the multi-signature was constructed by different uh, uh, public keys, X top, different extended public keys. And uh, if you wanted to verify, fully verify a multi-signature transaction, you have to construct the multi-transaction on your hardware wallet device. Otherwise, your hardware wallet cannot show you the full transaction information of that multi signature transaction. So this is why uh, Keystone and the Code Card are better choices compared to Ledger and the Trezor because for Keystone and the Code Card, we have the function to collect the extended public keys, not private keys, collect the extended public keys from other co-signers so that we can construct the multi-signature on the device itself. So when a multi-signature transaction comes in, for Ledger and Trezor, mostly you just do blind signing because you cannot verify it on the device itself. But for Keystone and for Code Card, you can fully verify the transaction. Mm -hmm. I think this is can very I important. You, the difference between Trezor and Ledger is would be Trezor, uh, would be Ledger even uh, what a, well, uh, well, let's say a worse option because you you cannot yes. verify. Yeah, yeah, correct. So Trezor Trezor is a little bit better, but I think the best choice is still Keystone or Code Card for multi signature. And uh, I think that's the first thing I want to share. Uh, the second thing I want to share is that uh, 
uh, people should really, really be careful with multi-signature because some people think that uh, I have a two, two, three multi-signature, uh, which means I have two prior keys or two mnemonic phrases, then I'm safe. This is a totally a huge misunderstanding, which is even though you just need two keys to sign a transaction to make this transaction valid or to put this transaction on the, on the Bitcoin blockchain. But if you wanted to reconstruct the transaction, you need all the mnemonic phrases, which means you need all the extended public keys. So Otherwise, the map as it's called, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like you need to draw the map first. I think, yeah, because yeah, otherwise yeah. you're screwed, right? I mean, if you don't have the map. Yeah, so it's just like a like a safe box. You need this three three mnemonic phrases to build the box, but the box you only need two keys to open the box. It doesn't mean two keys can build the, the box. You still need three keys. I think this is extremely important for. Uh, people who are using multi-signature. And uh, that's the second uh, suggestion. Uh, the third suggestion, uh, which is I learned from CASA, because right now we're working on integration with CASA. I think CASA has a very good scheme, which is called health check. So because for some users, they set up a multi-signature and they put their life savings into that uh, multi-signature and then they don't touch it for like three years or four years or five years. And uh, I, I think that's quite risky for people because in such a long time, you don't know what happened to your hollow wallet. You don't know whether it's still functional when you wanted to move that Bitcoin. So CASA introduce a, introduces a very good scheme, which is called health check. So they ask you to check the legitimacy of your private keys of your different signers every month. So for example, one of the signer was done, was, uh, was done. So then you can use other two, how it was, you can construct another multi-signature and use the other two keys to sign the transaction to the new multi-signature because if one of the signer doesn't, it's not functional, that is really risky for you. So I think that's the, the Third thing I wanted to suggest to a multi-signature user. Uh, to recap everything, the first is you should construct your multi-signature on your hardware wallet and the Keystone and code card can do this. And the second is you, you need to, even for a two, 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 three multi-signature, you need to keep the three sets of the mnemonic phrases very well. That's the second thing. The third thing is you need to do health check for your signers, this is really important on a maybe a monthly basis or bi-monthly basis or even every quarterly, but you need to do health check, yeah. Yeah, and I think, uh, I mean, it shouldn't be a warning, but uh, it's really people need to understand if you don't know what you're doing, uh, I would I would advise people, especially who are noobs or who are not, you know, technically advanced, mm -hmm. you're not so much educated yet, to stick to a, you know, solid, uh, single wallet mm -hmm. with uh you know with the air gapped uh, keystone wallet um mm -hmm. by the way uh let me go okay uh be before we go into the uh different constellation combinations of uh two of three or three of five or whatever um air gapped like a lot of people ask uh the question like what is the difference okay between air gapped with keystone wallet and air gapped with uh micro sds such as uh you can mm -hmm. boot, do, boot, uh, you know, do both, I guess, you know, with a micro SD, whether it be a cold card or um, Keystone wallet, like what, uh, is there, is there, is there a attack vector <laughs> um, when it comes to air gapped uh, methods? <clears throat> yeah, um, actually for, actually first I wanna, wanna share is that security is not a zero or one thing. Security is like a spectrum. So you, what you do, you just uh, try to close as many attack surfaces as possible. Uh, first, uh, 100 air gapping is, of course, has less attack surface compared to USB or Bluetooth. 
This is definitely the thing. And uh, if we compare QR codes and a micro SD card, technically, technically, micro SD card is has a slightly bigger attack surface than QR code, technically, because there's a very small chip in the micro SD card. It's not just simple storage, you just put in something and take it out. There's also a very small chip in the in the micro. Maybe I can find a, a article. Yeah, Alexi, that's why that's why I think we should say we should call it. Uh, and I think uh, you know, Gigi wrote a, a a good some good chapters in his book Twenty One Lessons. Because at the end of the mm -hmm. day, I mean, it's not really trustless because it's trust minimized. Because at the end of the day, you have to trust something, whether it be the, the hardware producer or you know the compo the maker of the components. Uh, so, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> um, yeah, it's not hundred percent. You're right. Yeah, it's trust minimized. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's not a hundred percent. For example, here I'm sharing a sharing an article talking about. Uh, even tiny micro SD cards have chips that can be hacked. So, uh, so still the suggestion here is that uh, you cannot fully trust one thing. So the thing, the thing, the the better. Uh, how can I? Okay, sorry. Let me go back. So uh, the 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 ultimate suggestion here is that you cannot fully trust for one solution. So. Uh, the best choice here is you can build up your multi-signature with different hardware wallets from different vendors. Mm -hmm. Maybe one of those signers is a software wallet. It's okay, but you, sh you should too. Uh, and uh, pay attention that sometimes you choose different hardware wallets doesn't mean they don't you don't have the risk because nowadays uh, a lot of uh, hardware wallets are the fox of Trezor. I think code card is moving their code base more and more away from Trezor's code base, but still there are a lot of hardware words they're just Trezor forks. If you use three Trezor forks, it's almost the same as just using Trezor. So just use different um, hardware words from different vendors and build on different code base. This is very important for, for normal users and try to minimize your trust for a single vendor and also try to minimize okay. the so attack surface. So it could be called like distributed risk. <laughs> like That's right. Correct. Correct. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we, we haven't talked like about different constellation or combination, like, you know, uh, options of uh, multi-signature, whether it be two or three, three or five or whatever. What about, mm -hmm. you know, let's say we use, uh, let's say we, 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 you know, we create a multi-sig with, a uh, bitbox, you know, with a bitbox only, you know, bit Bitcoin shift shift crypto security, a uh, bitbox zero two, mm -hmm. uh, and a Keystone wallet, and a cold card. I mean, would you would you recommend that, or or, or what are the different like, uh, uh, yeah, you options? Mean, you mean choosing the choosing choosing the quorum or choosing the hardware wallets? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, if if you wanted to know about choosing the quorum, actually, um, just one moment. Uh, I can share a. I think the, I think the Michael Flexman Totaro is a very very good one. Uh, this is uh, written by Michael Flexman, so this is a like full Totaro for multi-signature and this Totaro not only tells you the uh, not only tells you the uh, how to do it but also tell you all the logic behind the, the multi-signature for example here there's a chapter called pick your quorum and uh, you can see he also talk about some like advanced considerations uh, the differences between this kind of uh, quorum pick, uh, mm -hmm. whether two, two, three, or two, two, four, three, two, four, or even n is bigger than five, this kind of thing. So this tutorial is very good. And, uh, you can learn a lot of not only how to use it, but, uh, why it is, it is. So, uh, this tutorial is highly recommended. 
Uh, but if you want to, if uh, you also mentioned how many hardware wallets we wanted to choose, I think uh, for Keystone and Code Card, uh, these are the best choices. Uh, for the third one, you can use a software wallet. Maybe some some people are just using Blue Wallet as one of the signers. And also you can try Bitbox. I think that's also a good option compared to Ledger and the Trezor. They can also construct the, the multi-signature transaction, uh, construct the multi-signature on the device itself. So it's also a good choice. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have, I mean, you know, people can go check out uh, the, the different, you know, uh, uh, tutorial guides by whatever, keep it simple Bitcoin or uh, KISS or, or uh, or BTC sessions, but do you have on your website, if I'm, if I, if I can screen share right now, um, on key, keyst dot one, uh, you have quick guide. Is that are these like the guides also to to create like how to create uh, with different you know uh, 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 with different hardware wallets or uh, different methods? No, no, you can you can go to support. Oh, support. Okay, S support. Mm -hmm. And in support on the left side, you can find just scroll down on the left side, you can find uh, multi sig, like multi signature. Yeah, multi signature. Just click this multi signature. Uh, sorry, not this one. Go up uh, Bitcoin wallet, third party integration is Bitcoin wallet. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. And here you can find under Spectre and Spiral, we have also Blue Wallet. We have uh tutorials about not only single signature but also multi-signature uh and multi-signature for example with what kind of wallets like with uh cold card and uh, with cold card we use cold card and seed picker as the main like examples okay. For okay. are you thinking like to add like other uh, variations of multi-signature with for example you know as we talked about like bitbox yeah. uh, keystone i think cold card I think for, for these are just uh, tutorials or just samples. If you want to use other hardware wallets, you can do it on your own and maybe do your own research. For, for this support articles, we just give an example that how to use um, Keystone with code card with this software wallet and also maybe seed picker. Yeah, it's pretty detailed. Yeah, with good with nice displays, mm -hmm. you know, how, uh, and pictures like uh, step by step tutorials and instructions yeah yeah so great yeah uh so it's yeah so you have with specter and sparrow um uh, blue wallet okay yeah and many others that's great yeah okay lixin um uh, i think we have covered uh pretty pretty much everything is there anything i've left out that we should have uh we should really emphasize or um uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. Okay. And uh, if people, and also I want to emphasize that uh, our team, just like when we were at Cobalt, Vault, we were very, very keen to user feedbacks. And uh, my DMs are open on Twitter. So you guys, if you have product suggestions or you need some feature or you find some bug, you just reach out to me on Twitter, or you can go to our Telegram group, and we are very responsive. And also, uh, another prop, another thing which is I'm really, really proud is that we have a very strong customer service team, and usually we answer all the emails within 24 hours on work days. Great. So yeah, and also if you go to support.kista.one, you can almost find everything, not only our own stuff, but also the compatibility of Keystone with other software wallets. And uh, yeah, we really wanted to be supportive for your uh, Bitcoin journey. Yeah, this is, yeah. Yeah, and a final thing uh, for the, you know, for the protection of your, of, of one's, uh, you know, uh, uh, private keys, you know, the seed phrase, you have also sort of a tablet, what's it called? Like a, like a... Uh, yeah, metal. just like, yeah, Keystone tablet. And okay. also we have three versions, Keystone tablet, Keystone tablet plus, and also Keystone tablet punch. All right. Well, thank you so yeah. much for everything you're doing, man. Uh, you're doing a great job and uh, keep it up and we'll talk soon again. Thanks. Yeah, thank you so I'll much. I'll put everything thank in the show so notes, much. okay? Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
All right. Um, that was it. Lexin Liu, CEO of Keystone Wallet. Uh, make sure you follow him on Twitter. I'm going to put everything in the show notes. And um, on Twitter, the website is keyst.1. And like, share, subscribe, and follow me and Lixin on Twitter. And if you have any questions, you know, you can go into the Telegram group. Uh, they are really supportive, really responsive. And um, yeah, hope you enjoyed this uh, quasi, you know, tutorial guide uh, overview on uh, Keystone Wallet, which is, you know, formerly Coba Vault, but it's now, you know, what I really love about the open source uh, nature of the, the secure element. The, the the you know the e the ease of use the simplicity of it and uh, yeah and the overall security philosophy behind it. All right, thank you so much, and I'll see you soon again. My name is Kevin Davani of the Kevin Davani Connection Show. Bye.